the simplicity of the gospel. Welcome to the simplicity of the gospel brought to you by the Pegwell Community Church here in Barbados. I am Pastor Chantel Stout and we are glad that you have given us the opportunity to share with you today and uh, the heart of the Father to hear what he has to say to his people. Today I want to share something with you that is very special and by the time that I'm finished I hope that you would be excited, that your excitement would have been built up and that your expectations would outgrow the cares, any cares that you would have of this world. You know, God has given us such great promises. He has given us reassuring words, and each time we partake in his word, there's something new, there is something fresh, there's something there that would propel us. There's something there, you know, to carry us through. And I believe today that this word is for somebody, and I want to encourage you, Today can be a life-changing day for you. It can be a life-changing moment. So I want to encourage you to listen, to hear what God has to say for you. I want your hearts to be open so that you will be blessed. Today I want to speak on, or to encourage you rather, not to dwell on the old because you can certainly miss out on what is new. Don't dwell on the old because you can miss out on what is new. As I focus on old and new, I want to look at a few things that we tend to hold on to which could cause us to miss out on the new thing that God is about to do. First, we hold on to things that are obsolete, and obsolete meaning things that are out of date. For example, if we consider the light bulb, the light bulb was invented a very long time ago and it was done so for a purpose it served a purpose and today it still serves a purpose the light bulb is not obsolete if we think about for example a floppy disk those were invented a long time ago they served their purpose yes but as things technology began to evolve they began to be obsolete. There's no longer any purpose for these things. And I don't know how many people there listening today may have a box of floppy disks at home and you're waiting for some opportunity to come again where you can use them. I want to tell you today that you're wasting your time. Get rid of the old so that you can embrace the new. Get rid of the old things so that the new things can become of value and begin to work for you in your life. In Hebrews chapter 6, it reveals Jesus as our high priest. And Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus ultimately replaces the old covenant, which comprises of sacrifices of the bulls, of the rams, for the forgiveness of the sins of man. Today, Jesus made a sacrifice for our sins and he did it once and for all. There was no need to go back every year. There was no need for the high priest to offer the sacrifices of these animals for the people. Jesus' sacrifice was once and for all. The sacrifices under the old covenant, you see, they serve their purpose. But through the blood of Jesus, the sins of the world are taken away. John chapter 1 and verse 29. I want you today to understand the power of the blood of Jesus. I want you today to understand the power of the name of Jesus. He, Jesus, came to replace the things of old. He, Jesus, is what is new and what we should embrace today. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 19 and 20, it says, for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ and through him, that is Jesus, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Philippians chapter two, reading from verse nine, it says, wherefore God has so highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus that was sacrificed for us. Jesus' sacrifice is better than the sacrifice of bulls, than that of rams, than that of lambs, pigeons, whatever was used in that time for the sacrifices. His blood gives us victory and causes us to live in victory, causes the very devils to tremble at his name. The blood of Jesus, it saves us from our sins. And I want to encourage somebody today not to get caught up in the ideologies and theories that are out there that try to disprove Jesus as our Savior. I myself can testify to you today that Jesus, he is real. And his sacrifice, it has transformed my life. I want you to have the opportunity and you to take that moment today to accept him as Lord and Savior and see what he will do for you. The life that Jesus gave, it was purposeful and it was necessary for all humanity. When the world wants to throw him out, I want to encourage you to embrace him and to receive him as Lord and Savior today. Another thing I want to look at today is the working of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of the Lord came upon several individuals. He came upon men like Othniel, like men like David, men like Samson, men like Gideon and others. And it was for a reason, it was for a season, it was for a purpose. But today, we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit who dwells on the inside of the believer. Too often the Holy Spirit is rejected. Too often the Holy Spirit is overlooked because, you know, we do not understand who he is and who, what his role is, what he has come here on earth to do. The Holy Spirit is here today and he's here to dwell within. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God, it dwells within you, it resides within you, it stays within you, the believer. He's here to teach. First, in John chapter 14 and verse 26, it says, But the Comforter, that is the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I said, I have said unto you, he's here to convict the world of sin. John chapter 16 and verse 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He's here to give revelation. He's here to give wisdom and power. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, he's here to guide into all truth, to show what is to come, and to give spiritual gifts to the believer. So the believer should never settle for anything less than these. Where, where, where there is not the working of the Holy Spirit in your life, you need to seek God. Ask God, what is happening? Why am I not seeing the work of the Holy Spirit? Why am I not being taught by the Holy Spirit? Why am I not being led by the Holy Spirit? Why am I not being empowered by the Holy Spirit? And surely God will reveal himself to you. I want to encourage somebody today not to settle for the Old Testament encounters with the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit would just come and rest upon for a particular task but I want you today to long for that indwelling of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you as a believer. I want to encourage you today to be filled with the Spirit of God. Don't dwell on the old things and miss out on what is new. Another thing we tend to hold on to and we miss out on the new things are the attitudes. We tend to hold on to attitudes. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17, it says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. What are these old things? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, it tells us some of these old things. The things where we walk in the flesh, where we we. we look to fulfill the things of the world and the pleasures of the world those are the old things but if any man is in christ 
he is a new creature. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 20. You could have a more in-depth look on the things of the flesh, on the old things, the old attitudes, which we are encouraged to put away. The works of the flesh are manifest as these adulteries, the fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, and the list goes on. I know sometimes it is easy for us to hold on to these things of the flesh. Sometimes it is easy for us to hold on to things like unforgiveness. But I want to encourage somebody today, forget the things of old and embrace the things that are new. What is new in this context? You can go further in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. What is that? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, of which, against which, there is no law. So these are some of the new things that God wants you to embrace today. These are some of the new things that God wants to fill you with and wants to make your life so rich, so full, and so free. Brothers and sisters, do not hold on to the old things and miss out on what is new. We can also miss out on the hand of God at work when we hold on to the old things. We are living in an age, I believe, today where we need to have a renewed mind, where we need to allow God to just be God. In the book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19, it says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I, God, will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I want you today to take this scripture and I want you to ponder on it in your heart. I want you to allow this scripture to become alive in you. I want you to long for it. Behold, I do a new thing. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in your desert place. God is saying today, you see the victories that you had in the past? Remember the enemies that I scattered on your behalf? You see the waters that I parted for you? You see the provisions that I made available when there was nothing? You see my hand of healing? upon your life? You see the situations that I turned around in your life, in your favor? Well, remember those no more. Don't consider them at this point. Not that they were meaningless. Yes, I God, I did all these things, and you shall be before me a witness, before the people a witness for all the things that I have done. But don't remember these right now. Don't consider these right now. Don't hold on to these right now. Because I, God, will do a new thing in your life. A new thing, not a refurbished thing. A new thing, not a renovated thing. When it is new, when God says new, it is new. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? He's asking a question. When are you going to realize or won't you realize this new thing that is about to happen? You've been on roller coasters of battles and victories and battles, but God is about to do a new thing. He will even make a way in your wilderness and rivers in your desert. Are you walking through wilderness places today? Are you walking through the desert places today? You've had victories before, but God isn't necessarily saying today, I will work it out the same way that I worked things out before. Behold, I, God, will do a new thing. Don't hold on to the fact that God showed up in the past and say to yourself, he's done it for me so many times, so I don't need any more victories. Do you remember that song? that is penned and sung by Sinatch. When I thought that he has done too much, my God, he did it again. 
My God, he did it again. And I want to encourage somebody today. God can do it again for you. He can do it again for you. He isn't finished working. He's only finished when he says he is finished. Today in Isaiah chapter 43, God is saying, do not remember the old things. Don't consider the things of old because I, God, will do a new thing. God will be demonstrated in this world. I believe he will be demonstrated in a mighty and a powerful way in this world, in this season, in this era. And I want to encourage you to be a part of what God is about to do. Behold, he will make all things new. We cannot put him in a box and convince ourselves that we know how God will work. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 25 to 29, he says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that many wise, not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and he has chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things that are mighty, even the base things of this world, the things that are despised. God has chosen, yes, these things which are not, and he did this, to bring to nothing the things that are, so that no man, absolutely no man, can glory in his presence. Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to dwell on the things of old. If God has said it in his word, we can hold fast to it. If the woman with the issue of blood settled for remaining in her condition, the word of God said that she, would, she was out of money. She spent all that she had. Suppose she decided to go and borrow money from somebody and continue to seek after physician after physician so that she could get a cure or help for her disease. If she had settled for that, rather than to take a chance and try Jesus, she would have died in her state. But all oh, the healing power of our great Messiah, with just one touch, she was made whole instantly. What about the man at the pool of Bethesda? What was the norm? An angel at a particular season would come down into the pool and stir up the waters. And they that would step in was made whole at that moment. That was the norm. And for 38 years, a man lame he stayed there in the environs. He stayed there waiting for his chance, waiting for some kind-hearted person to help put him in the pool whenever the angel came. Mind you, he also tried for himself because he said to Jesus, whenever the angel came and stirred the water, somebody else stepped in before he was able to get in there. Maybe he he dragged himself along the ground. Maybe he was doing those things because he wanted his healing. He wanted his healing. The norm was an angel would come and stir the waters and somebody will be healed. What is the norm for you that you are seeing all the time, that you are expecting all the time? Don't hold on to the old things. Behold, God is able to make all things new. He is able to do things in a way that you cannot expect. Don't hold on to the things of old and miss out on what is new. Look at the new thing that happened in this case of the man at the pool of Bethesda. The new thing that God did for this man, you can read in the book of John and chapter 5. When Jesus came, Jesus went beyond the norm. The norm which was for the angel to come and trouble the water. When Jesus came, all Jesus did was to say to that man, he said, rise up, take up your bed and walk. He didn't say,
say to the man, let me help you into the pool for the angel is here. Let me help you into the pool so that you can receive your healing. You see, we hold on to the things that we know rather than to allow God to be God and to move in our situations. Do not hold on to the things of old and miss out on the new opportunities and miss out on what God is ready to do in your life. You know, my God likes to show off. And when I say show off, I don't mean show off in a bad way. He likes to show his power. He likes to reveal who he is. And God is desiring to do a new thing in you and through you and among you. And I want to encourage you to expect that new thing today. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Because behold, I, God, will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in your wilderness and rivers in your desert. This is the word of Almighty God. Father, where we have held on to the things of old, where we have hindered the new things, the new move, O oh God, in our lives, we ask, O oh God, for your forgiveness. Father, today, God, we welcome your Holy Spirit to dwell within our hearts. We put away the negative attitudes from our hearts and we allow the fruit of the Spirit to take preeminence. We forget our past victories and we anticipate, God, your mighty hand at work in our lives. We testify, God, to your goodness. We testify, oh God, to your greatness. God, in these end times, oh Lord, may we be a part of what you are doing and what you are about to do. Father, where we have rejected your son, Jesus Christ, we ask your forgiveness. Jesus, we ask you to come into our hearts and to cleanse us. Be Lord of our lives and make us a new creation for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We pray that your hearts have been blessed in the name of Jesus. God bless you. If you do not have a local assembly, feel free to join us for an exhilarating time of worship. Our services are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Sunday evening, healing and deliverance at 6.30 p.m. Join us in prayer on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. and for Bible study on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Bless fellowship and enjoy. The simplicity of the gospel.